Welcome back to the channel, everybody, and today we are going to be speed painting the infamous WizKids Beholder. Through the use of paint washes and paint stains, we are going to paint this big bugger in about 90 minutes. That does not include dry times. However, a relatively quick paint job for such a large and somewhat complex figure. Before we begin with the paint job, because I always get the question, what happened to the big chunky flight stand and how did I get rid of it? I quite literally snapped it off just with brute force, then I used epoxy putty to fill in and texture the gap left, and then I shoved a brass rod up his butt. That's it. With that done, all we have to do is clean up all the seam lines, strip off the crappy WizKids primer, reprimer it, and we are ready to paint. We're going to go for a red-ish beholder, and starting off with a two-color mix for our base coat, model color orange red and game color parasite brown. The parasite brown I just have a little bit added, so the orange red covers better. It's a little bit on the transparent side. Before beginning our stains and washes, going to do some pre-highlighting mixing in some elf skin tone with orange red and just doing a rather heavy dry brush along the eye stalks. If you're planning on doing any highlighting before putting on washes and stains, they need to be fairly significant because they are going to get toned down quite a bit. Despite that advice, I'm actually just doing a very light highlight here because I didn't want the eye stalks to stand out too much. Next comes our first paint stain using Game Color Scarlet Red. Remember, a uh, paint stain, it's basically just a very heavy wash. Because red is naturally transparent, we don't have to thin this too much to get a transparent look. So we just thin the paint a little bit so it tints our orange a little bit more red, but still rests in the recesses of the model. And we just slather this on because we're not thinning the paint too much. We don't have to worry about tide marks. Uh, we can just go to town here, cover everything and let sit to dry. Our second paint stain is once again the same color, game color Scarlet Red. A little bit thicker this time. This is applied more like a layer to the bottom of our beholder. So we're going to be going from a bit more of an orange color to red and eventually to purple. While the bottom of the beholder is drying, we are going to move up to the stocks and start highlighting them to speed up the painting process. Using once again our orange red mixture and again elf skin tone and also some light orange mixed in as well. And we're just going to dry brush the eye stocks first with this mixture and then we're going to repeat it for a second highlight. The same mixture but with the orange red eliminated. And again, if I over highlighted the stocks in the previous step, it would speed up this process because the eye stocks would be already highlighted. However, wasn't very sure what color I wanted to go for. So I'm doing it now instead. On the bottom, since we put two coats of our scarlet red, we no longer have any shading or highlighting. It's just a base coat of red there. So we need to add some more shade. And for that, I'm using this time a wash of hex lichen. So we have the paint a little bit thinner this time because I want it more in the recesses and not completely staining the raised area or the base coat or highlight areas. With the transition of colors we now have going on the miniature now, we have from orange to red to purple, wanted to add a little bit more color on top so that transition is more prominent a highlight of scarlet and light orange mixed together. You can easily dry brush this. I decided to pick out in individual scales and this was followed up with a second highlight with white added. I normally say never add white when you're highlighting red. 
However, what we have here is more of an orange color with the orange and scarlet mixed together. So here it is okay. If it's a more medium or dark red, definitely don't want to add white. You're going to get pink. With all the washes and stains that we've been slathering on the model, we do have a little bit of blotchiness here and there. Uh, that's easily taken care of uh, doing some cleanup work using model color Scarlet. Now, note, we didn't use Scarlet when we originally painted these areas. However, Scarlet is an appropriate color based on the colors we now have on the model. So use what you need at the time, not what you used before. And then after that, I still wasn't quite happy with the amount of contrast on the top, so I decided to give it a very thin uh, wash of game color gory red. Again, working in a new color red here, so we have a lot of red varieties going on on this model, which is fine. For the spiky bits, I picture them in my head more like uh, outgrowths from the skin rather than horns or something like that. So I want to tie them into the skin tone. To do that, I base coated them with Vallejo Panzer Ace's new wood, and now I'm giving them a wash of Hall Red, and then the ones towards the bottom, I'm giving them a wash of Game Color Hexed Lichen. Remember, we used this color on the skin on the bottom, so that's going to tie them in, and we're going to get a little bit of a color transition so there'll be a bit more red on top and a bit more purple on the bottom. For the highlights we are going to go a little weird starting off with model color red leather and then we are going to mix some desert yellow into that and then eventually a buff. This is a bit of a weird color combination to use here, but again, want to tie them into the skin. I don't want them to look like horns that are stuck into the side of the beholder. Also, while we are doing these highlights, I'm trying to keep the uh, spikes on the bottom a little bit darker, where the, the base coat and the skin tone is darker as well. And then as we move up towards the lighter areas of the beholder, uh, we're going to lighten them up more. This is one of the few areas, or at least the, the most major area on the model that is actually took a little time to paint because we're slowing down. We are doing layering here. We could dry brush this, but I had such a, a funky color combination here. I wanted to layer to make sure I got it right. For the mouth, this is a really good example of our stain wash combination uh, and exactly how it works. Starting off with model color brown rose, and then I gave that a very heavy stain of game color scarlet, so it tinted the brown rose, also rested in the recesses a bit. And then after that, I gave it a thinner washed of hexed lichen, so the hexed lichen is going to go more into the recessed area and rest there. And as you are well aware by now, these are the same colors we've used elsewhere in the model, but because we are using them over a different base coat, the results are going to be different. So we can use the same colors and not end up with the same effects based on changing up the base coat and or the highlighting. Because the mouth is such a prominent area on the figure, we have to do a little bit of extra highlighting here. So brown rose, scarlet red, squid pink, and white. White added twice for a second highlight. Really makes the mouth pop. The fleshy bit underneath the eye I struggled with a little bit because uh, this is the only area of the model that looks very uh, soft and skin-like. It just seems very out of place next to all the uh, very thick armored plates. However, gave it a wash of model color black red. Remember, this is area is still the same color that we used on the base coat, so there's already a red base coat there. Then I highlighted it with Cavalry Brown and then mixed some beige red into that. I think I did do a little bit of tweaking off camera in this area because I, I just wasn't happy with it. It just seemed so out of place on the model. Uh, 
can't remember if I gave it a, a light a purple, dark purple wash or black, but uh, I did fiddle with it while I was working with uh, different colors on the model, trying just you know, trying this, trying that. All right, it's finally eyeball time, and we're going to focus just on the center eyeball because that's the best one for you to see out there. And start off with base coat on all the eyeballs, a model color deck tan, and then we add the pupil. Well, we want this big. It's going to be a big prominent area of the model. So just start small and then start making a bigger and bigger circle of black till you're happy. From there, we put down a base coat of game color scurvy green first, leaving just a, a very thin black edge. And then we add white and start doing lines going towards the center where the pupil is going to go. First with a little bit of white added, and then again, a little bit sharper lines with more white. Just a note, uh, with the smaller eyes, uh, the method was a little bit different because they are so small, so I went with dots instead of lines there. So I just did a ring of dots and then put a, a dot of black in the center for the pupil. From here I decided to do something a little bit different. I wanted to try for sort of a, a hazel type of eye. So in the center of the eye I put a glaze of deep yellow and then around the outside edge of the eye a glaze with stormy blue. Visually, I think I made a mistake here. I should have reversed those two colors. I think going uh, darker towards the center would have been uh, more impactful rather than having a light center and then darker out on the edges. And then finally, all we have to do is put a drop of black right in the center for the pupil. You can also add a drop of white if you want that anime reflection look. However, don't do that if you plan on putting a gloss coat over the eye because uh, painting on a reflection and then putting on something that reflects, uh, those two things are gonna contradict each other. So it's just one or the other. Now back to the whites of the eyes. We need to spice up this area so Thin glaze of game color gory red, and I'm stippling this on to give that red vein eye look. Last thing to do is a little tweaking of colors here and there, cleaning up any messes. This is where uh, that gum skin area I tweaked a little bit. Also, decided to add a few little details here and there. There were some little lumps and bumps around the more uh, skin area of the model, so decided to paint those with magenta and then around the eye stalks using a mix of magenta and beige red. Adding subtle little bits of color like this I think really elevates your paint job to the next level. So here we don't just have a red beholder, we have uh, a beholder with you know bits of magenta and purple in it and uh, beige red so tweaking those little tiny bits seems you know minor but in the end uh, it just adds so much more to your model at this point i went ahead and finished the rest of the model base and whatnot and gave it a flat varnish now it's time to gloss things up and for that, I'm using Liquitex Gloss Gel, a very thick, very glossy gel, and applying that in the mouth, the teeth, not the gums, and the eyes. Inside the mouth, I'm using this fairly thick to show you know, collection of saliva and whatnot. And then for the eyes, I'm thinning it out slightly so we don't get any texture on the eyeballs. Next thing to do is to raid the old tackle box for some fishing line. We just need a teeny tiny little bit and we're gonna super glue that into the mouth. I'm just putting it in two places. Make sure you get it angled at the right direction. And then once again, breaking out the gloss gel and covering up the fishing line. Of course, you wanna get a realistic glob of drool. So you wanna build it up at the bottom and 
a little bit thinner as you go up and hey while you're at it here go ahead and coat the mouth again with another layer of gloss gel so you get even shinier results and there we go a quick ish beholder paint job I don't run a timer when painting and there was a lot of waiting because of dry times but uh, it's definitely under two hours so as you can see by using very heavy paint washes ie paint stains a little bit of dry brushing you can get decent results and getting to that point you can stop or you can go further you can add extra details so start putting layering in uh, picking out certain areas of the model so how long it takes to paint a miniature is all up to you. But that's it for now. Hope this helped, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs> the fun never stops when you're clean and tidy. <laughs>